Hello, I'm Joe Friedman, Director of the Neurospin Compute Laboratory at the University of Texas at Dallas, here to talk about scalable reversible computing with skirmion billiard balls. I'll skip a motivation about reversible computing with zero energy dissipation, because I expect that you've already heard plenty about that during this workshop. I'll briefly summarize the concept of conservative logic with billiard balls to motivate this presentation. The core concept of the billiard ball computing model is that binary signals are represented by the presence or absence of these billiard balls. The presence of a billiard ball is a 1, and the absence of a billiard ball is a 0. Here we have input ports P and Q that each have a binary value represented by an incoming billiard ball or a lack thereof. Each entering billiard ball reaches one of the output ports with its final location dependent on the presence or absence of a billiard ball at the other input. If both inputs have a billiard ball, the balls will collide, and these elastic conditions are critical to the billiard ball computing model. Assuming perfectly elastic collisions and a friction-free surface, no energy will be dissipated by this reversible computing system. More complex billiard ball gates and circuits are also possible, such as the c naught gate shown on the right. Billiard balls are great for envisioning the concept, but the real friction and the huge forces required to move these billiard balls have huge energy costs. Any real billiard ball computer will face two primary sources of energy dissipation, the energy required to move the balls and the energy lost in the collisions. This brings up the obvious question. For a real reversible computer, can we identify a physical billiard ball that can be efficiently transported and collided? To maximize the efficiency, we'll want a billiard ball that is very small, indeed, uh, ideally nanoscale. We want it to be stable at room temperature or the operating temperature of the computer. We want it to be controllable with predictable motion and smooth such that it moves and collides with minimal friction. Real billiard balls are those last three, but are not nearly small enough for a practical computer. The question then is, can we find a physical object that looks like a billiard ball and acts like a billiard ball, but is much smaller and can be moved with much less energy? The answer is yes. Over the last 40 years, there have been several proposals for microscale billiard balls, but they are not small enough for practical reversible computing systems. My group identified that magnetic skirmions, which are nanoscale magnetic quasi-particles, naturally provide the billiard ball behavior with exceptional energy efficiency. I'll talk first about the previous proposals that inspired our work, then give a brief background on magnetic skirmions, then explain our proposal for a reversible computer with skirmion billiard balls. The idea of billiard ball logic has been exciting from the very beginning. Very shortly after the initial conservative logic proposal, magnetic bubbles were proposed as billiard balls. These billiard balls are small regions of a magnetic material with magnetization opposite that of the rest of the material. By manipulating magnetic fields, these bubbles can be propagated to perform various conservative logic functions. While interesting, their 2 micron di diameter is much too large for practical computing systems. However, as you'll see shortly, they are remarkably similar to magnetic skirmions, but just 100 times larger. More recently, there was a proposal to use microfluidic bubbles as billiard balls. The space of logic gates um, for their system was the AND OR gate shown here. There are two inputs, A and B, that are defined as either a 1 or a 0, depending on whether or not a bubble is present. The AND and OR outputs are computed simultaneously with a signal encoded by the presence or absence of a bubble at these outputs. As you can see in the video, they experimentally demonstrated this microfluidic billiard ball concept. Three AND OR gates are shown here cascaded. The logic gates don't work perfectly, but you can see that sometimes the, sim the simultaneous input of bubbles at both input terminals leads to a collision that generates AND and OR output bubbles. While it's very cool that they are able to demonstrate this, the 100 micrometer diameter of these bubbles are not practical for real reversible computing systems. But it's worth mentioning their synchronization of these bubbles, which is critical to the correct functionality of any billiard ball logic gate. As you can see in this video, this ladder structure helps the bubble become synchronized. A related work demonstrated logic operations with ferrofluid droplet billiard balls, in which a rotating magnetic field causes these ferrofluid droplets to collide to perform conservative logic functions. 
This was experimentally demonstrated, and you can see the repeated and consistent operation of these functions. Again, while this is very exciting experimental work, the fact that the droplets are roughly 500 microns, that's half a millimeter, in diameter, limits their utility in practical systems. So going back to the question, what else can we consider as a smaller and more efficient practical billiard ball? Which leads us to magnetic skirmions. Similar to magnetic bubbles, magnetic skirmions are small regions of a magnetic material with magnetization opposite the rest of the material. However, they are much smaller, with radii smaller than 100 nanometers. In this work, we will discuss 20 nanometer skirmions. Magnetic skirmions are two-dimensional quasi-particles that can exist at the interface between a ferromagnet and a heavy metal. They can be stable at room temperature and have been proposed for memory applications. As you can see in this diagram, we apply a current in the plus y direction, which, through some complex physics, causes a spin-hall force to push the skirmion also in the plus y direction. There is also a magnus force, called the skirmion-hall effect, that causes the skirmion to move in the minus x direction. This magnus force is related to the fact that when you kick a soccer ball with spin, the ball follows a curved trajectory. To control the motion of these skirmions, we can use a track structure with walls that repel the skirmion and force it to stay inside the track. Finally, we will use the skirmion-skirmion repulsion between the two skirmions for billiard ball collisions. To recap, we will be leveraging four forces on the skirmions. One, the spin hall effect that causes it to go straight. Two, the skirmion hall effect that causes it to go sideways. Three, boundary repulsion that keeps the skirmion in line. And four, skirmion skirmion repulsion that prevents skirmions from getting too close to one another. The skirmion billiard ball logic system is very much inspired by the microfluidic bubble structure as seen in this and or gate. Skirmions entering the A or B terminals will be pushed by the spin hall effect towards the OR and AND terminals and will interact at the junction in the middle where the skirmion tracks are opened. Again, the presence or absence of the skirmion represents a 1 or 0, respectively. This is the logic function performed by this AND OR gate. We see in this truth table that the number N of skirmions is always conserved. So there is always an equal number of inputs and output skirmions. If there is one skirmion, the OR output is 1 and AND is 0. If there are two, both OR and AND are 1. If there are no input skirmions, then nothing happens, so I will not bother showing any of the simulation results for the case of zero skirmions. Again, this AND OR logic gate is composed of two tracks in which a skirmion is forced to go straight. As, long, as well, uh, along with this junction between these tracks where the action happens. At this junction, the skirmion hall effect pushes the skirmion to the left, as you can see in the case for A equals 0 and B equals 1. However, if a skirmion is already present on the left track, the skirmion on the right must keep straight. This is shown in the figure on the right. In this micromagnetic simulation snapshot, as well as all the other videos and snapshots that I will be showing you, the white color indicates plus E magnetization, the black color indicates minus E magnetization, and the rainbow colors indicate magnetization in the XY plane. Here are micromagnetic simulation videos for the three non-trivial cases. The skirmions are being pushed to the right by a spin hall effect, which was the, in the positive Y direction. The magnet force pushes the skirmion from bottom to top. Critical for billiard ball computing, the skirmion skirmion repulsion causes the skirmions to collide and repel, when they both reach the junction simultaneously. Another important logic gate is the inverter copy gate. We will provide a skirmion to the control input during each clock cycle, and we will use it to either duplicate or invert the input skirmion. Both will happen simultaneously. As we can see here, we are simultaneously computing the inverse as well as causing the input skirmion signal to be duplicated. Here is a simulation video for the inverter copy gate. When both the input and control signals are 1, the 1 is copied to the two copy terminals. When only the control is a 1, that control skirmion goes to the not output terminal, and as you can see, it will also copy the 0 input. The skirmion billiard balls can also be used to perform the Fredkin gate operation using a slightly more complex structure. In this gate, 
The C input determines whether the I1 and I2 inputs will propagate to O1 and O2, or if they will be swapped. This is a good time to say thank you to the organizers for inviting me. I am very much honored to be presenting in the same place, at least virtually, as Professor Fredkin, and I'm very impressed and appreciative of all the work he has done over the years and all of his contributions to the field. And again, I am very honored to be contributing to this exciting field and hopefully will be able to help his vision become reality. Here we're showing the Fredkin gate operating for all seven interesting input combinations. We're not showing the case where all inputs are zero because nothing happens and that's a pretty boring video. Lastly, I'll note that this structure uses the C input twice in order to provide the proper skirmion skirmion repulsions. All of these individual logical logic gates are great, but as we mentioned in regards to the bubbles, it is critical that the billiard balls be synchronized in order for the collisions to occur properly. So next we'll be discussing how to synchronize these magnetic skirmions. To synchronize these magnetic skirmions, we have a couple proposed approaches. The one that I'll mention first is with a notch, as you can see in the diagram on the left. The notch prevents the skirmion from passing as it gets stuck at the notch. Luckily, there's another cool feature of skirmions that we can use to our advantage. As you can see in the inset on the right, as you increase the, the current density that is being used to push these skirmions, the radius of the skirmions decreases. So what we'll do, as shown in the larger graph, is periodically provide an increased clock pulse that shrinks the skirmions and allow them to pass through these notches. As you can see here, the skirmions get stuck at the notch. When the current increases, the skirmion shrinks and squeezes past the notch. Using that synchronization process, we can perform cascaded logic operations and have large complex circuits. So here is a one bit full adder. You've seen most of the components already. First, we have some inverter copy gates. We've also got some OR gates. I haven't mentioned these, but they cause two Scrimeon paths to be merged. The gates are combined into two half adders, which make up the full adder. Finally, we have synchronizers between some of the gates to ensure that all of the Scrimeons collide synchronously at the junctions with the inverter copy gates. The entire system is driven by the same clocking signal. There is a constant low current that causes the skirmions to reach the notches and a periodic increased clock pulse that shrinks the skirmions and pushes them past the notches. This entire operation of this full adder is shown in this video. In addition to all the features that I just mentioned, the fact that we have clocked non-volatile billiard balls enables us to use pipelining such that each logic gate is used during each clock cycle. The latency of this full adder is two clock cycles for carryout and three clock cycles for the sum, with a throughput of one full adder per clock cycle. While notches are great, there are some technical challenges involved with their use. We have therefore also proposed using voltage controlled and magnetic anisotropy for clocking. By changing the voltage at the electrode, the anisotropy of the ferromagnet changes, modulating the ability of the skirmion to pass the VCMA zone. So here is another one bit pipeline full adder, this time with VCMA clocking. Here the boxes with diagonal lines are the VCMA regions. When they are black, skirmions cannot pass. When the clocked voltage pulses are provided, they are gray and the skirmions can pass. By clocking these VCMA zones, a single constant current can drive the entire system. With that, I'll conclude. We have proposed the first nanoscale billiard ball computing system as magnetic skirmions are physical billiard balls that can be efficiently transported and collided. Their diameter can be roughly 20 nanometers. They are stable at room temperature and are non-volatile. Their collisions are based on skirmion skirmion repulsion and they are energy efficient and can be transported with minimal friction. Hopefully we can move forward and realize this vision of reversible computing with magnetic skirmion billiard balls 40 years after the initial billiard ball computing proposal. Finally, I would like to thank my students and collaborators who performed the research and contributed to this project, particularly Sean and Maverick. Thank you for your attention and I look forward